Before we look at rate reports, I'll have to explain the method we use to analyse them. The major problem is you can't tell what a port looks like from the outside, so we make port moulds, because you can't see weird things like this major port offset without them. This exhaust looks acceptable from the outside, but with its squash roof and bowl squashed on one side, it looks quite different. But even that is not enough information. You have to actually slice the mould to check out the cross-sectional areas of each section. Then after you've measured the sections, you plot out the cross-sectional areas to work out where the problems are. You should now be up to speed on the principles and how we physically check it. So we'll now look at rotary ports. From the side, we can't really see much. But if we look at it from the top, we see a problem that the early piston engines had, i.e. a shallow short side turn. The problem with the rotary engine is, if you want to make it short and light, you have to have very narrow plates, and that means you can't use any modern port techniques because they're squashed in such a narrow space. We'll start with the single dizzy engines, i.e. the ones with 3mm apex seals, and we'll start with the secondary ports. I don't have a 1974 3B casting port mould, but it should be the same as a 1978 R5 casting, just with more port timing. This edge is port opening, and it's usually 32 degrees after top dead centre. And this is intake port closing. The majority of ports close at 50 degrees after top dead centre, but there are some oddball ones. With the R5 casting, they flatten the short side radius, which doesn't seem ideal, but then they bulge the long side radius to try to slow the air for the turn. Now let's look at flow curves. This is the flow in CFM at 28 inches depression, and this is the crank angle timings. And if we look at the 1978 R5 casting, it flows about 90 CFM. And if we look at the port timings, it opens about 30 degrees after top dead centre and closes about 40 degrees after bottom dead centre. This is one of the oddball ports that close at 40 degrees after bottom dead centre. This was after the fuel crisis and everyone was shrinking ports. Here the graph shows 20 and 60, but that's residual leakage from the side of the rotor before it reaches the side seal. It's basically leaking through this flat area between the rotor and the side plate up to the side seal. Let's go back to the flow. Now we know this port flows 90 CFM, and we know the maximum flow for an area is 146 CFM per square inch. And since this port is 1.2 square inches, that means it should be able to flow 175 CFM at its maximum. So 90 divided by 175 means it has a discharge coefficient of 0.51. Basically it's flowing 51% of the maximum it could flow, which is not really that good. We'll see if we can find something more efficient later. Next is 1981 Series 2 RX-7, and they kind of tapered the port wider at the turn. And now from the top, they have a radius in the short side. There's considerable difference in the short side radius of the Series 2 casting and the R5 casting. Another thing they've done is kind of squash the turn, which is the opposite of what you want. If we look at the flow curve, it flows about 120 CFM. But this port has 10 more degrees than the last one, which removes a lot of material inside the port and makes it flow a lot more. The other problem is this massive dip here. It's like the flat turn is smacking the air right into the side of the rotor rather than turning it 90 degrees into the chamber. Next is 1983 to 1985 Series 3 RX-7 and it's slightly bigger in the runner and bigger in the turn which we see improves airflow. I don't have flow figures for the Series 3 but I'd say from the port moulds it flowed a touch more here and probably didn't have this in it. At the end of the first generation RX-7 body shape they made some Series 3s with oddball engines. There was a 12A turbo and a 13B. And from a porting perspective, the 12A turbo was the best readily available plate around. It's designated by a Y. This is another early closing 40 degrees before bottom dead centre port. It flows about 106 CFM, which is not as much as the late closing Series 2 port, but it's a lot more than the 90 CFM of the R5 port. You can see it closes at 40 here. And the reason why is they ballooned out the turn a lot. As an experiment, I opened up the closing point of the 12A turbo port so it exactly matches the Series 2 50 degrees after bottom dead centre closing point. And if you look at the flow, it starts to exceed the Series 2 flow. You can see it's closing here at 50 degrees now. That's not all this port can do, but I'll explain that later. Next is the second generation RX-7 body shape. Series 4, about 1986, and Series 5, about 1989. They look pretty similar, just the Series 5 is bigger in every direction. You can see from the outside the runners are taller and wider. They straight line the floor here on the Series 5 compared to the Series 4 curve, and that makes it wider before the turn. But when we look at the flow curves, the Series 4 flows 135 CFM and the Series 5 130 CFM, 
showing that the Series 4 might be better in a normally aspirated form. In turbo form, the Series 5 larger volume port might have a slight advantage in peak power, because large is safe when you're looking at peak power, and that might make up for the loss in flow, which is kind of what happened because the Series 5 makes more power than the Series 4. On the Series 4 we can see a shallow turn, and on the Series 5 we can see a very ballooned out bowl and a very late turn. Air must be hitting this late turn and using up its energy rather than filling the chamber, hence less flow. The Series 4 has the same long side radius as the Series 2, they just filled in the short side to increase the bowl area so the air can turn easier. Basically increasing the bowl area has more gains than having a good short side radius. Next we have the Unus Cosmo around 1990 with its 13B RE and the 20B engine. And when you first look at this port from the outside, it looks massive. But that's not the true story, because the port turns in the block. So what you're seeing is a slice through a curved pipe. It's 60mm through the slice, but 50mm perpendicular to the center line. With the Series 4 and 5, they squashed the intake manifold against the block to fit the turbocharger in, and this put a lossy turn in the manifold. But with the Cosmo, they started the radius in the manifold and continued it in the block, making a very large radius, and that reduced that turn loss. In piston engines, we also look at the manifold alignment to the port. This kink is what Prostock tried to avoid. And we look at the flow curve of the Cosmo port, and it's about 120 CFM versus the Series 5 130 CFM. It also has holes in the flow in the opening and closing of the port. Pretty much from the 12A turbo on, Mazda straight lined all their short sides. But the 20B has the most severe short side. Next came the third generation RX-7 body style. And that's the 1992 Series 6 and beyond 13B REW. And in this one they shrunk the port massively. Like all manufacturers that went with a too big port, they shrunk it down because they were losing drivability. Mitsubishi made the same mistake with their ludicrously large first generation 4G63 engines. Because their next generation engine, the Lancer Turbo, they went to small ports. My friend had one of these large port engines, and you're always below peak torque in normal driving, which was utter garbage for a normally aspirated engine. If you line up the runners of the Series 6 and Series 5, they're both roughly the same size. If we look at the flow curves, the Series 6 is now slightly above the Series 4. With the bonus of not having these holes in the flow at opening and closing. Basically there's more area under the curve. With the Series 6 they put the short side radius back in, but it's a varying radius. Basically at the top and the bottom of the port it's radius, but the middle is pretty flat. They also changed from a gradual long side radius to quite a sharp one in the Series 6. Looking at the underside, the Cosmo has a gentle but narrow turn whereas the Series 6 has this late, bulky, sharp turn. From the cross-sectional area of their runner and the flow through the runner area, we can calculate the velocity. And it's no surprise that the Cosmo 20B has the worst velocity. 1.9 square inches for 126 CFM isn't great. It's got a 0.45 discharge coefficient. And the best is the 12A Turbo with a later 50 degree after bottom dead center closing. And its discharge coefficient is 0.71. Others are the Series 2, Series 4, just a plain 12A turbo early closing, Series 5, Series 6, and the old R5 casting. Next is the 6 port injection, which is Mazda's take on variable valve timing. We have the secondary port on the bottom, and the top one is the auxiliary third port. The auxiliary port had an aluminium tube in it with a window that used to rotate to change the port timing. There was two types of 6 port injection, the small port with the 3mm apex seal engines, and the larger ports with the 2mm apex seal engines. The port timings for the larger 2mm apex seal engine is the secondary opens at 32 degrees after top dead center and closes at 30 degrees after bottom dead center. The auxiliary opens at 45 degrees after top and closes at 80 degrees after bottom. The tube for the auxiliary port is not worth mentioning because it has no port characteristics. But the secondary port is very interesting. It consists of a small runner and a very bulbous turn. Coincidentally, if you port a rotary port on a flow bench looking for maximum flow, this is the rough shape it ends up. This is the flow from the 3mm Apex Seal 6 port injection, and it's about 145 CFM. You can see this late closing down here. And if you took the aluminium tube out of the auxiliary port, it would end up up here. I don't know why you do that, because the auxiliary port has low velocity as it is. And if we look at the 2mm Apex Seal 6 port injection, it's about 156 CFM. You can see the port closing at 80 after bottom dead center whereas the smaller one is 70 after bottom dead center. This is the auxiliary port by itself, and this is the secondary port by itself. And when they're stacked on each other, they end up up here. Basically, it's their flows added. Look how close the secondary port is to the R5 casting port. It's got 10 degrees less port timing and a third less runner, yet it flows roughly the same. Take the auxiliary tube out of the larger 6 port and it flows up here. 
If we look at the velocity of the six ports, the three mils here and the two mils here, and there's nothing special about them. But if we look at the secondary port on its own, it's now at the top. And that concludes all our standard secondary ports. Next we have the primary ports in the center plate, and it's a 1974 3B casting versus a long port runner. I wanted to compare the flow of a small RX3 port versus a long port runner because I had an inkling it would flow the same. Unfortunately, the only long port plate I had was one that someone else mile ported, so I had to use that one. The RX3 and the long port both flow the same, it's just the long port opens 10 degrees earlier and closes 10 degrees later because someone mile ported it. Effectively, they do flow the same. Next is Series 4 and Series 5 primary port, and I can't tell the difference between the two. They both have a G cast in their ports, so they're both probably the same. Here they went for a nozzle port, tapering the runner down to the exit. The problem is they didn't balloon out the turn, which means the air is travelling so fast that it's going to smack the long side before it exits. The Series 4 is a smaller port, so it opens later and closes earlier. And if you look at the flow, it's quite low, about 73 CFM. The Series 4 has injected diffuser plates hanging in the port. It's at this point and it hangs about this low, which kills flow. If you take it out, it flows up here, about 77 CFM. It's not worth taking the diffuser out or the fuel droplets won't get broken up. Then we have the Cosmo primary plate and it's the same port turning in the plate and cut off at an angle. The Cosmo port opens later than the Series 4 port but closes a bit later and overall flows about the same. They learn from their mistake of killing airflow by putting an injector diffuser plate right in the middle of the port because the injector setup in the Cosmo doesn't affect flow. These two primary moulds aren't marked and I don't remember what they are. Maybe the top one's 12A turbo and the bottom one's 6 port. The small one's M and the large one's K. Either way I don't have flow figures for them. And we go to the velocity and we look at the RX3 port. And it's now at the top. When we crunch the numbers it's got a 0.93 discharge coefficient. Basically there's not much more flow to find in this port. This is a very good standard port if the velocity is correct for the application. But if you needed more flow, like in a bridge port, you'd have to increase the runner area. In the next part we'll be looking at ported ports.